Hello friends, this is Gökçe from cgcave.com. Welcome to a new 3ds Max tutorial. In this lesson, we are going to continue our example or exercise on uh, spline modeling. The first thing I want to do in here is I want to add this fillet in here. I noticed that this is a little bit thicker than this, but whatever. For now, let's uh, go on. And this corner in here, uh, I want to show you how to add that. Okay. Now, we know a way to add chamfer to all the corners, but not to a specific corner. To do that, I'm going to go back to the box mode. Uh, I'm going to close the show end result so that I can see the box uh, alone without any chamfers or anything. Now, this method is an editable poly method, uh, method but as we are uh, approaching to the uh, subject, the real modeling uh, technique, uh, I want to show you little hints of it. And this is what I'm going to show you today. I'm going to show you how to edit this box, add a chamfer only to this portion in here. To do that, I'm going to click on the modifier list, choose edit poly, hit two to go to the edge mode. And I'm going to just select this edge in here. And then I can find the chamfer command in here. I can just click on the settings and I can increase the chamfer or decrease it. I can increase the segments from here. We are going to go more in depth with this, but for now, just uh, follow me, please. And we uh, we can, th this way we can add the uh, extra chamfer or fillet on one edge. Okay. And I want to also change the chamfer uh, smoothing option to smooth chamfers only. That way we, we will see more flat faces. Okay. Okay. As we are modeling, I want to disable or hide the chamfer modifier for now because I want to utilize the snaps at the corners. Uh, I'm going to create these side faces. Now, I'm going to hit T for that. Go to the top view. Uh, let's isolate these. Uh, to isolate an object, you need to select it and hit Alt Q. Uh, or you can select an object and click on here, isolate selection. And then I can go to the box uh, command, hit S for snaps. Be sure that the vertex mode is active. I'm going to disable the grid points for now uh, to avoid confusion. Now I'm going to just draw this, create this box in here. And let's set the width for this to 2.5. Uh, I want to set the uh, leader length at 40. I want to set the height to minus 50. And this way we have created a side face. Actually, let's uh, make this a little bit thinner. Uh, or let's leave it like that. No problem. I'm going to hit W and move this uh, in the negative X uh, axis one centimeter. To do that, I'm going to just enable the offset mode. And then in the X uh, slot, I'm going to type in minus one and hit enter. And this way you can see that we have a new face. And I didn't want this to be exactly uh, at the same level with this face because I want to see a little bit of a difference between these two faces. These type of things will make your uh, models look more realistic. You can see that. We can easily clearly see a detail like this in here, and we want to uh, create the same effect in here as well. Okay. And then I can apply a, a symmetry to this, or I can just redraw the box. Both are valid, uh, I guess. Uh, what one more thing, one interesting thing you can do is you can just hold shift and create a copy, then hit S and just meet this mid midpoint to this one, and then type in one in the x axis again to move it outwards one centimeters okay cool now let's create uh, these two faces top and bottom faces at the top face i'm going to create this box again i can hit s to disable the snaps for now uh, let's type in minus 10 for the height and for the length i'm going to type in 2.5 again and i want to move this outward one centimeters as well and you can see that we have our back uh, face uh, created. Now I can just copy this again, hit S, and I'm gonna put this uh, to this corner because this is the drawer face in here, so I wanna uh, match the faces. I guess it will look a little bit better, uh, in my opinion. But one thing is there's a detail in here, as you can see, uh, a solid piece that uh, doesn't come out with the drawer. Uh, I can add that uh, by moving this down a little bit. Uh, and also I want to make this a little bit thinner as well. Let's uh, set the thickness to one centimeter and move it back on. Let's move this down minus one centimeter in the z-axis. And I want to just create a copy of this. Uh, let's uh, set the height to one this time. And hit S and grab this 
and move it here, okay? And I want to create the same thing at the bottom in here. Maybe make this a little bit higher and move it back in here, okay? Now we have three different faces in there. Uh, if we hit F4, we can't really see the detail, but you know that uh, once we add the chamfer modifier, we are going to be able to see that detail and it will look good. <laughs> Let's uh, hit T and create a rectangle from the top view. This is the this is for the top face uh, of the drawer of the coffee table. And I wanna just create uh, a flare for the corners. Uh, in in rectangle command, you have this corner radius option, and you can just add this detail easily. Okay, and I wanna match these fillets uh, as best as I can uh, to here. We can make an exact match, but uh, because these pieces are uh, manufactured separately, uh, it's natural to have a little bit of a difference, a little bit of a variance uh, between them. So I'm not going to bother with it right now. I'm going to hit Alt A. This uh, was the shortcut for align, if you can remember. I I can just align this rectangle to uh, the models we are creating right now. So I'm going to just, going to just click on this portion. In the Z axis, I want to move the minimum point to the maximum point. This means uh, that it will take the rectangle and put it on top of everything. Let's uh, add an extrude to this. I guess two centimeters is good enough. And we have our top piece as well. Uh, we need a bottom face, a uh, bottom uh, piece in here. And to create that, let's hide the top piece, uh, piece first. Uh, I'm going to hit T. I'm going to show you a very interesting thing. Uh, while using snaps, what you can do is you can change the working dimensions or wor working X size of snaps, which means uh, it's a little bit vague, but which means that you can only uh, grab the snaps in the grid, for example, or you can grip all the snaps, but the spline will be drawn to the grid. Okay, if you uh, choose 2.5. If you choose 3, let me show you what happens uh, with an example. Now, if I draw something like this, uh, let's tr start again. I want to create this bottom face. What's happening in here is it will grab the first snaps it sees from the top view. Okay, I'm going to show you what this means. Like if I go here, you will see that it has created this uh, on the top uh, of everything. Now it worked fine, but uh, what if we had these not leveled? Okay, let me draw that again and show you what happens uh, if you use it like this. Now, if these are not leveled, you will see that once I draw this, let's leave it uh, at here because uh, I already made my point. Uh, you will see that uh, it, because it catches the first snaps or grips the first snaps it sees, it will put these ones uh, on a different level than these ones. Okay. So what I recommend you to do, let's uh, undo these because I want these uh, leveled, but uh, let me show the method anyway. What I want you to do is to go to the 2.5 snap mode and then draw this, okay? Uh, by the way, let's start from here. It will be uh, a bit better. Uh, keep this, these points on the outside, these points on the inside, okay? And if I find, uh, sorry, uh, I guess I, yeah, now that's right. Now if I finalize this, and go to the grid, you can see that it projects uh, the snaps or all the points to the grid. Uh, so whatever you draw, it should be planar, okay? When, uh, then you can add an extrude and you will uh, face no problems, okay? That's what I uh, was trying to achieve. So you can use this 2.5 snap option uh, for these type of situations. Okay, let's move this up and align this again uh, to here. This time I want, uh, in the Z position, I want the maximum point to sit on the minimum point, which means that put this at the bottom of the uh, object I'm aligning to. Okay, so hmm, let's see. I guess we are missing something. Yeah, uh, we need to make this a little bit longer. Okay, 
So what I want to do is I want to set the height to minus 15, uh, minus 12, I guess. No, 30. Yeah, because this was two centimeters. Okay, minus 13 for this height. And let's right click and unhide all to uh, show everything. Okay, I want these to look uh, the same color, look, have the same color so that we will be able to see these uh, a little bit better. Let's enable the chamfer in here. I'm going to add a chamfer to these as well, but first I want to uh, create this edge sweep in here. It looks cool and uh, I think this is a very good technique. You can use this, utilize this a lot. For that, we, we will need two things, uh, as you can remember from the snap, uh, sweep, sorry, sweep modifier. Uh, first thing is the path uh, spline. So you need a path for a cross section to follow, right? The second thing you need is a cross section, which is the shape that will go along uh, or sweep along the path, right? So we we actually created our path in here, the in the top face or top piece in here. If I hide the extrude, you can see that we have a path in here. Uh, we want the cross section to follow this path. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit Control V, which clones the object at its exact location. Uh, I want to create a copy and hit OK. And then let's isolate this piece, which will give us this shape. And if I uh, delete the extrude modifier, I will only end up with this rectangle. Uh, if I add a sweep to this right away, you can uh, let's uh, and isolate and see what happens. You can right away see that we have this type of a an addition uh, in here. Uh, angle is uh, kind of like of uh, kind of like like the shape we want to create. So let's stick with this. Then I'm going to add a custom shape. Let's try to change the align point uh, of the cross section. Let's just click here, for example, here, here. And around here somewhere, you can see that uh, it kind of sits on the outside of the object, which is uh, what I want. And let's uh, set the length to two, because this said, uh, I guess, two centimeters, right, of height. And also, yeah, let's change this to this in here. Okay, this sits perfectly. Uh, what I need to do, what I need to create is a custom shape for this. Uh, but as you can see, this uh, even this adds a flavor to the design, right? Uh, uh, this model tr started to have a um, soul, I guess, like because we used something other than a box, uh, right, for uh, modeling. So these custom shapes uh, are very crucial uh, to deliver your taste to the viewer, right? Whatever, let's try to create this uh, custom shape. Now, if I zoom in here, uh, it's a little bit mushy, the images, but... I guess we have something like this, then something like steps going down. So let's try to create that. 5G uh, grids are a little bit too big, so let's uh, not use them. Uh, I can create a rectangle first so that I can sit in it uh, so that we have a 2x2 two two shape. I'm going to choose line, hit S for uh, snaps, and let's create the base first. And then I can just hit S again to close the uh, snaps and just go about freely. I want to just uh, holding shift. I want to create these steps first, and then I want to create a larger uh, step in here. Uh, let's hit one and choose this. Uh, go to the absolute mode and let's copy the z axis values and paste it in the z axis values of this vertex so that this line should be straight. And then I can just add a fillet to this corner and then choose the rest and add a smaller fillet to those corners. Okay. And let's try to use this for this shape in here. I will select this. Uh, I'm going to go to the sweep modifier, go to the use custom section and pick and pick this. Okay. And as you can see right away, we have a much cooler looking shape or a edge, let's say, around the coffee table. Right. Okay. So let's add the chamfer and then leave the rest to the next uh, lesson. Uh, to add chamfer, I want to choose the objects that I haven't add chamfer yet. This piece had uh, chamfer on it. So let's choose this. Um, maybe leave. Oh uh, yeah, yeah. Let's add to this one as well. It works for 
these type of shapes as well. Uh, I'm going to show you in a minute. Let's add a chamfer modifier to everything. I can just decrease the amount to zero and bring up this a little bit slightly to see where I like it. I guess I like it here. And you can see that we uh, have this uh, type of uh, transition between these two as well, and it will also look uh, more realistic. Uh, but maybe we want to uh, smooth this uh, only for chamfers, right? And then we will have a smaller uh, gap between these two objects. Okay, let's right click and isolate. And this is what we uh, have come up with uh, up to this point. I guess we are very close to the end, but in the next lesson, I'm going to just uh, wrap up and finish the model. Uh, okay, uh, I hope this was useful for you. Uh, if you find it useful, please hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, hit the notification bell next to the subscribe button. Uh, thanks for listening. See you in the next lesson.